the first movie I saw in, in color that made an impact on me was um, The Seven Doors. Seven Doors, Snow White and the Seven Doors, which was a, a Disney film. And my mother didn't take me for a long time, or what I thought was a long time. And I kept asking her why not. She said, because Walt Disney doesn't like color people. I said, why, what, what, is that? what does Snow White have to do <laughs> with color people, mommy? And she said, everything you do has to do with you being colored. And so we're not going to see Snow White till they have the color day at the movie. We just ain't going. I said, oh my God. And so she probably wouldn't have said it that colloquially because that was my own mother in coming through. And I told my own daughter the same thing 30 years later. That we weren't going to go see the Karate Kid. Uh, I said, because he's not Asian. Aunt Effie was a little colored girl. Mama was a little colored girl. You're a little colored girl. Imagine. If we could get all of them to talk, what would they say? Did you know when you were writing these poems 30 some odd years ago that they would become such a touchstone for so many young women? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I, um, and I'm glad I didn't. I, 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 I was a poet from the Lower East Side or from the, the North Bay in California. I was happy living in the subterranean kind of world I lived in. I taught college. I had I had two different jobs. I had where I could take dance class six times a week. I could go hear music at two or three nightclubs that were still in San Francisco. I was a happy young woman. <laughs> and I just happened to write poetry and I wasn't trying to get anywhere. Uh, I was where I wanted to be. I was part of the forefront of uh, the great black arts movement of the 1970s and late 60s. Uh, I got to work with musicians whom I admired. I was, uh, I, I was very happy on a very low scale and I, and I didn't have any aspirations beyond that. When we told, they told me we were moving to Broadway, I said, what for? What for? I have a theater I'm working in here. I have an audience here. Why would I all of a sudden just move it? <laughs> and that shows you how non-commercial I was. Because <laughs> a big thing happens when you move to Broadway. And that, I learned that in the first week up there. Absolutely. We're, and some of the, a lot of the actors travel with the play to Broadway. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, a lot of them did. Well, the whole New York cast went to Broadway. It was graduation night, and I was the only virgin in the crowd. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. Bobby Jones, Martin Jerome, and Sammy Henderson, mm -hmm. Eddie Freeman, and Randy all cussed. All the prettiest niggas in this back to be town carried me out with them in a deep black Buick smelling of Thunderbird and ladies in heat. <laughs> we rambled from Camden to Mount Holly, laughing at the afternoon speeches, dangling our tassels from the rear view mirror, climbing different side of project stairs. I mean, what were the times like that inspired you to write oh, this? Oh, it was very, um, it was very tumultuous time. The war in Vietnam was not over yet. Uh, uh, Attica had just happened in 71. They shot up all the Black Panthers in Chicago in the, in the office one morning, 44 people. And uh, the Black Panther movement was coming apart at the seams in California. Uh, it was just, it was just a really uh, furiously alive community. Uh, in both black and Latin um, communities, and and in music and art and poetry as well. Right, and and it's all in it's all in this piece. The piece informs it. You you feel more familiar with the piece with with the, those times the more you read those poems, because their sense of urgency and danger is much more uh, concentrated than ours may be right now, although we may be going to another sort of dark ages in this country now. Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. 
and didn't care enough to send a note home saying I was late for my solo conversation or two sizes too small for my own tacky skirts. Oh, I was elated at first and um, I was very excited uh, because I had been uh, approached at first by a young, brilliant young director, Nzinga Stewart from Los Angeles who had developed a, a workable script and um, was in the process of finishing up writing the script. And um, we were associated with Lionsgate. And after a few months of Nzinga and I working on the script and talking with each other, I got a phone call from, um, from Lionsgate with Joe Passierna, Mike Passierna, and uh, I didn't know then Mr. Tyler Perry. Uh, we're, on, we're on the same line. And they called me and they asked, you know, they said to me, a terrible question or a great question? And I said, okay, well, you know, what is that? And they said, well, how would you feel if Mr. Perry was interested in doing um, a screenplay, directing, and producing for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough? I say that only to say that the reason I say the whole title of my show is because Mr. Perry's title of his movie is For Colored Girls, which is not the whole title of my book. So in order to get my book, you have to get my, the whole title. And um, For Colored Girls, which now is available to millions of 20-year-olds and 19-year-olds and 28-year-olds and 38-year-olds, uh, it's going to be available to them and for a new and different forum. Another song with no singers. Lyrics, no voices. Unseen performances. Ordinary. Brown braided woman with big legs and full lips. Become yourself. I got a real dead love in here for you now. I guess this is goodbye. Like you've never seen it before. Yeah, that's the best question or the worst question. I mean, you're both playwrights, and I know in theater, the playwright is king, and in film, the director is king. Um, does it, uh, like, did it feel like you were handing something over? Well, um, I did hand something over. I'm saying, like, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was painful to to trust that this adaptation will be made to turn into a film. Or, uh, I mean, was it? I think I think I don't know what you mean, because um, I I turn over for Color Girls once at least once or twice a month uh, for the last forty years. I mean, I've been doing that. So it wasn't terribly scary to me. I've trusted it to other people sight on the scene before. It, 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 was, um, it was a matter of trust, trust in my work and, and, and of the inability to escape its meaning uh, and, and trusting that the pure hearts would, would move in the right direction. Um, and trusting that viewers and readers uh, and actresses would take the words uh, with all their might and strength that they have and not, not be afraid by them or, or be made to feel silent or illicit or something. Even though I've, I've had the poems for over 30 years, there have been thousands of productions all around the world, and so it's constantly being renewed for me. But I think the opportunity Mr. Perry afforded was to expand my audience in my, in my demographic and beyond it, because I, now I have a whole slew of younger viewers, both men and women, and I think that's helpful. So your reaction overall is positive? For the, for the most part. Okay. The new book. Oh, yes, yeah, some sing, some cry. Tell me about I that. wrote it with my sister Ifa Baeza, who lives in Chicago. Uh, it took us several years to make it, to write it. It's the uh, the saga of seven generations of one 
black family from slavery times to the 1970s. And it covers different kinds of black music from slavery times to the 1980s. And we, we get to know this family uh, through all these different parentages and cousins and their lovers and their playmates and recipes from the South and letters to daddy and all kinds of things that go on in families and that are passed down. Uh, so that we get to study this family with an intimacy that we don't usually have a chance to explore because there aren't that many of us who can trace ourselves back to slavery or out of slavery or two generations before the end of slavery. That's very hard to do. But, but we have made this uh, panoply of characters uh, from what we could glean from our father's side of the family and my mother's side of the family in terms of mythology and bigger than life characters and tragedies and uh, plagues coming through towns or white men coming through towns or um, I know it's all kinds of dangerous weird things you know. That's awesome. Some sing some cry. Mm -hmm. So if, if you were talking to a young woman now, what, what advice would you give them if they wanted to talk? Get as much education as you can, get as many letters after your name as you can, and then set off on your own. But don't set off on your own without anything to fall back on. Never do that. My mother told me that about getting married. That was her advice, not about trying to be an artist. Her advice to a single woman is make sure you can always support yourself. I was taught that from a little girl. So those messages are important for women and they're especially important for young men. Because even now, and I'm proud of them, God knows I'm proud of them, more black women and Latin women are going to college than are our men. And uh, which is not to say that you have to go to college, you can go to a trade school and make a perfectly fine living and be a good citizen. But what I'm talking about is um, careers where you can make your own path and you make your own glass ceiling. Those kinds of industries are things we need to cultivate more. Do you think that you need turmoil and pain and No, you know, you don't need to die to be a good artist. You don't have to starve either. Um, that's not saying that won't happen, but it doesn't have to happen. If we were as careful as, about how we use our money as we are about where we put words on a page, we would all probably be better off. But it's for some reason, for centuries now, it's been that um, artists have to, you know, fly by the seat of their pants. And, and, and we don't have good uh, parachutes. My name is Entazaki Change, and you're looking at Real Black.